Good sign, Mark. They shot it only 30% from three last year. Program worse. Take a look at Stony Brook. They have to start some of their younger pieces because of injury. Anya Cohn, number three, will start the freshmen. Policelli and Stevenson Moore are their top two returning starters to this roster. They lose two all-conference guards from a year ago. And they're switched to the CAA after multiple decades in the America East. Felder underneath can't finish. And they're just so banged up talking about the Seawolves. It's almost a matter of who's not playing for them tonight. Here's Fitzmorris underneath the Stanford transfer. Stevenson Moore. Air balls it wide. And that goes off the leg of Fitzmorris out of play. Kyle, what did Gino Ford tell us at shoot around today? We may shoot 43s tonight. <laughs> And he was talking about the disappointment they had last year. This was a, a pretty good roster. If you take a look at the starting five for the Gators, Kyle Lofton, Colin Castleton. They've been at lead eight berth as well as you see the brand new Billy Donovan court. You notice you see the, rat, the Rowdies too at the top of your screen. That's something you didn't have in the past. So you flip the court. Wave for the camera there, Mark. You can see us there <laughs> off in the distance. And we're set to get underway. Your favorite time of the year, my friend. Absolutely. College we've basketball set, is we've back. set the clock back, <laughs> and Hoops is back. Colin Castleton on the tip with Keenan Fitzsimmons, and Castleton wins it, and we are underway. Right away, Kyle, we see Stony Brook in a zone. We expected that. Yeah, of note, they're without five players due to injury and some of their key pieces. They're going to have to find a way to hit some three-point shots tonight. Richard, he's been a marksman from deep throughout the fall. And Castleton has an offensive rebound. Reeves seeing the start. Trains the tray. Offensive rebound, ball movement, make the extra pass, good things happen. The Gators off to a good start and that's a good sign, Mark. They shot it only 30% from three last year. Program worse. Take a look at Stony Brook. They have to start some of their younger pieces because of injury. Anya Cohn, number three, will start the freshmen. Policelli and Stevenson Moore are their top two returning starters to this roster. They lose two all-conference guards from a year ago. And they're switched to the CAA after multiple decades in the America East. Felder underneath can't finish. And they're just so banged up talking about the Seawolves. It's almost a matter of who's not playing for them tonight. Here's Fitzmorris underneath the Stanford transfer. Stevenson Moore. Air balls it wide. And that goes off the leg of Fitzmorris out of play. Kyle, what did Gino Ford tell us at shoot around today? We may shoot 43s tonight. <laughs> And he was talking about the disappointment they had last year. This was a, a pretty good roster. If you take a look at the starting five for the Gators, Kyle Lofton, Colin Castleton. They've been etched in since the start of fall practice into this starting five. But last year, Stony Brook, now this is a group that was near the top of the America East, had a chance to possibly win the conference tournament. As Stevenson Moore got denied by Castleton at the rim. And Felder lost it. Well, you cannot turn the ball over after you get a great play like that. Anya Cohn zipping in on Castleton. Ball loose. Stevenson Moore picks it up. And you mentioned it early on. This was the big bugaboo for Florida last year. Their inability to be one and done on the defensive glass. Here's Policelli. Go Richard. Stands in front defensively with the takeaway. And you cannot get three happy without inside touches. Lofton, the facilitator, finds Felder underneath. And that's batted out. And wanted to finish up that note on Stony Brook moving to the CAA that was made official on July 1st. But, you know, this is a group that had aspirations for an NCAA tournament berth. We're told in February that... You are banned from all postseason activities because of the switch of conferences. And 
you know, they had to play out the string. Some of the players just flat out left the roster, say, you know, we don't want to finish the season if this is our circumstances. And Gino Ford said he had good relationships, and right. he could not argue with that decision. Said he wasn't bad. He was just frustrated. Lofton a step back, a tray. Oh. Tip back. Fodor gets credit. Who gets credit for that? <laughs> 5-0 beginning to this one for the Gators. Rowdies are ready on their feet. I'm going to Jared Fry into the game for Stony Brook, who had an x-ray earlier this morning. Got hurt here in practice yesterday. Fry had ice on that toe and shoot around. Castleton, nice beginning to his fifth year. The Gators up a touchdown. That was all big fella by himself there. Castleton, the motor, and the slam. Timeout, Seawolves. Colin Castleton said originally, no way I'm coming back to college basketball. By Kyle Lofton. Boy, what a career he's had up until this point. In baseball, they say you have to be good up the middle. I believe the same is true in basketball, and that starts with your point guard and your big man. Gator fans know what they're getting with Castleton, and I think they'll be very pleased with what they get with all the experience from Kyle Lofton. Averaged nearly six assists per game last year. Jared Fry gives it up. Policelli off the curl. Tough look. Still scoreless are the Seawolves, and Lofton will push. Now let's see if there's an inside touch before the three. Seawolf still in his zone. Felder open underneath. And the punishing finish at the rim. That's just great ball movement. Soft spot of the two three is that free throw line area. Pretty impressive start for the home team. Stony Brook just treading water and a turnover. Soft spot of the 2-3 is the free throw line area. And when Castleton gets the ball in that area, that brings the big man up. And that leaves Felder on the weak side. That's a great high-low entry attack against that zone. So a couple of dunks are ready for the Gators. 0-5 start for Stony Brook. Castleton wants to extend his range yeah, from around 15 feet. That's the next step in his development, though. We'll see how many threes Colin hoists up, but Todd Dolan says we're going to give him the green light to extend his range beyond the arc. Still does not have a career-made tray. Fry, the best shooter for the Seawolves from the logo. Castleton trails. Steps in with contact, doesn't finish. We'll get two. Pretty agile for a guy his size, 6'11", 250 pounds. I think you will see him have an expanded role on the offensive end in a variety of ways. How about the little Euro step to avoid the charge, get himself to the free throw line? Now, last year was a drop in his free throw shooting. He went from 78% the year before to 70. Now, he had the shoulder issue he yeah. dealt with a lot last year. But I think Florida wants to get him back in that 75 and above range. Yeah, this year you're getting a healthy Colin Castleton at off-season shoulder surgery. Riley Kugel and Myron Jones are in. Gator fans eager to see the freshman Kugel and also see a better year from Myron Jones, former sharpshooter at Penn State. Castleton electing for that fifth year as opposed to going to the NBA. First team all SEC in the preseason. This is a rotation of those two, three, and four positions. Notice that Lofton stays, Castleton stays. Also, Alex, Alex Fudge is in there. The LSU transfer. Fitz Morris got denied at the rim. Fudge didn't see a whole lot of time at LSU. He was buried in the depth chart. Had a lot of depth in that front court with the Tigers. I love the ball movement, lack of dribbling. Fudge, tees it up, well off. Oh! 
Policelli. Still nothing from the Seawolves. Six minutes scoreless to start their season. Jones. And not a good start for him. Yeah, that's a little quick. I know he's anxious to er erase last year's numbers, but you got to have a little bit more patience. And the ovation you hear, that's for Jason Jatobo wearing those goggles right now. You see the start for Colin Castleton, but had that real gruesome eye injury at Tennessee. His rehab was grueling, to say the least. Wow. Jared Fry, we've seen some bad shots to start from the perimeter. That was from the broadcaster's position. <laughs> Policelli swirls it in, and the Seawolves on the board for a new year. Well, that's the danger with all those long threes. Usually means long rebounds. And that means your guards have to be involved. After missing their first seven shots, they finally connect. And Gino Ford says, we're going to chuck it tonight. Now, Fudge is in the high spot, and there's another high-low entry. And a foul here on Fitzmorris, seven footer transfer from Stanford. Second team foul on the Seawolves. Jones off the curl, limited space, and he's yet to hit the rim. You gotta get your feet set. Just 32% from three last year for Myron Jones. He was near 40% in his last two years at Penn State. Fitzmorris. Policelli with 10. A lot of air. I think this start is really important for Kugel. On cue. <laughs> Riley Kugel. And I said that, Kyle, because in the scrimmage, the open scrimmage yeah. that Florida had about a week ago, he was not very good. Coach Golden compared him to Patty Mills because of how quickly he picked up the offense. Didn't have a summer with the Florida Gators. Came in, was right in the playbook, knew just about everything. Here he gets a takeaway. Jones lofting up top. And the putback. Fudge runs the floor. You see the vision from Kyle Lofton to start that break. He can make that. I think it jinxed him, Mark. <laughs> That's the new wave of hoops, man. Let your big guy wander around the three-point line. Stretch the floor, why not? See, Fudge has got to turn around, just shoot the shot. Alex for the tougher look. No kidding. <laughs> Higher degree of difficulty. A lot of room in the middle of that zone right now from Stony Brook. It's really a big ask because you're asking the freshman, Anya Cone, to run the point on the road. Without two of their best guards, Aaron Clark is out. A sacred heart transfer. Out with injury. And there's another bucket of Trey. Well, everybody's going to get the green light, especially this early in the season. Well, you can't draw it up much better than this. Fitzmorris, they won't guard him out there. Makes him pay. And today's age, in terms of big guys who can shoot, that means big guys have to guard the arc as well. Also, we were talking about what's missing for Stony Brook. Also, Dean Knowles, an all-Ivy League guard out with a torn ACL. Kugel can't join the three-point party. And then Aaron Clark, who was all NEC, he's out with a back issue. I like him a lot. He's going to really help them. I saw him transfer from Sacred Heart can score the ball more than 16 points a game last year over 1200 yeah. points for his career and Mark we saw him take shots and shoot around he was very stiff with that back he was trying to hoist up threes just can't really move right now well, Gino Ford said that's his first workout in a month yeah 
Here's Fudge again in that zone. Elects for the look closer to the rim, and he's starting to heat up. Super athletic for a guy six foot nine. Had a limited role playing behind some really good players at LSU. Already nine points for Alex Fudge in his first game as a Gator. Returning to his home state, a Jacksonville native. Ten to shoot, Stevenson Moore buries the tray. Yeah, he's the best three-point shooter from a year ago percentage-wise, an outstanding 45%. Stevenson Moore, he's loving the crowd energy right now. He told them to shush after he made that three, <laughs> and he's telling them to bring it on on the defensive end. In that zone again, Fudge had the open look and traveled. Again, electing to take that drive to the rim. And we'll have a break in the action. Good start for the Gators to begin a new year. Fudge already nearing double figures with nine. Game come to you. Don't chase the game. So in terms of his shots, let Lofton find him. 0 for 2 from the arc to begin the night for Myron Jones. Trey Bonham's in, the transfer from VMI. They really like Kim's. You know, shorter in stature, but he's really efficient on the offensive end. Keenan Sarvin off from deep. And here's Bonham. We saw Sarvin make shots from the perimeter and shoot around. Richard to the rack. Well, that's too easy. It's a small lineup for Stony Brook as well. Now that's a team that played. You talked about yeah. how good they were last year. They were a small team. Yeah, they played Policelli at the five, and they're looking to play him more at the three this year. His natural position, number two in red across the way, or on this near side. Well, this one's from the half-court logo. And he's going to hear it from the Rowdies. Now that, that wasn't even the first two. Yeah. Lofton on the bench, so Bonham plays the point. Back to Richard up high against this zone. The thing that's impressive about Castleton being in the middle as a distributor is his size because he can see the floor. Gives you so many possibilities from that elbow free throw line extended area. Policelli harassed by Fudge. On your cone, the switch on Castleton with five. Another long three. Sarvin as the shot clock was dwindling down. Well, you've got to know defensively that this is a Seawolf team that's going to live at the arc, so you've got to guard at the arc. Not just at the arc, but the 28-foot hash. <laughs> yes, and beyond. <laughs> Post-touch Castleton will go to work. See, I like the way that he caught the ball and evaluated first. Everybody wants to dribble. See Niles Lane now in there on the near side, number four in white. Shot clock again dripping down. It was Bonham who missed fires. Rebound Stony Brook. This is coming our way. Look out. Yeah, you know, Lee Humphrey, I don't know if he still has eligibility left. He's <laughs> he going would to have, our left. He would have shot it. Here's what I like about Florida's offense in this high-low look. When you put Holden, and myself included, had a list of questions that you want to address tonight, you want to evaluate, one of them for me was the backup point guard and yeah. seeing Trey Bonham in that role. Also saw a little Myron Jones in that role in the scrimmages in the preseason. Castleton off balance. Policelli running the point now where a year ago he was the five man. Yeah, he played the center <laughs> spot in this game last year near Christmas when these two teams met. Blowout Gator victory 87-62. Not much, you know, comes back from that team for Stony Brook. Gators dominated on the glass in that game. They were plus 19 in rebound margin. Florida did not do that very often yeah. all year. Gators had 48 points in the first half. Here's Jared Fry. Long two is true. 
And he's got the green light, doesn't he? Yeah. Niles Lane will hoist. Rebound can't be corralled by Richard. And Kane Roberts almost double dribble. Another thing that Todd Golden will evaluate in this kind of game, because you're going to shoot a lot of three against the zone. But can you impact winning in different ways? No kick ball called. Roberts goes down to the deck, able to find his teammate Stevenson Moore. Polacelli of a foul. The whistle rewards effort a lot of times. And Roberts went all out for that loose ball. And I usually say, if you're the first guy to the deck, good things happen for your team. Here's the effort play. Keep the ball alive. And then on the glass on the weak side, Sarvin attracts the foul, goes to the free throw line. Juco transfer, Keenan Sarvin from the Netherlands. He's had multiple stops before Stony Brook actually played Division I at Coppin State prior to the Juco route. Big seven footer, Keenan Fitzmorris is back on the floor. So, you know, Kyle, we always do things in a pendulum way. When we don't have something, we go in the opposite direction. So, do you think Stony Brook, because they had to play so small last year, you look at their roster now and you've got a 7 3, yeah. a 7 foot, a 6 10. I think Gino Ford said, we need to get a little bit bigger if we're going to go into the Colonial and compete because you're going in from the American East, a, a conference that's in the 20s in terms of strength to one that's in the high teens. Castleton, nifty spin move. Marveling at his own work, jogging back on defense. And Gino Ford said it's you know probably the, the 12th or 13th best league in the country, the CAA. Had four teams with 21 or more wins a year ago. Pulicelli, pick and roll, Fitzmorris. Can't get the roll, foul on Castleton. Love the pocket pass that time by Policelli. There's a good look at Gino Ford. One of the really good guys. I always love talking to him. You know, we had him last year when he came here to Gainesville. And, you know, he he's taking it all in stride. He said it's the, the toughest eight months of my coaching career, switching conferences, no postseason a year ago, deemed ineligible, and now all the injuries before games even happen. Clark out, Noel out, Phillip out. Fry got x-rayed yesterday. Total of eight scholarship players and four total players out. There you see the record. He's had a couple of 20 win seasons, including last year. His only losing season was during the COVID year. Gators have controlled the lead throughout this first half. Reeves back in. See Loft in there, never dribbled, ball fake, attracted the defender, only dribbles after evaluation. Castleton mid-range. And you say, too, he sees a couple moves ahead, two passes ahead. Kyle yeah, Loft. I noticed that in the scrimmage. He had a ball screen. And Fry can shoot, man. You better get your feet defensively above that arc. You know, Ford said their best shooter entering the year. A freshman from Columbus, Ohio. Now Reeves slashing to the cup. Contorts in midair. Able to finish. Yeah, Reeves, his freshman year, really known as more of a shooter. Trying to expand his game offensively. Interesting offseason for Kowasi Reeves. Went to the transfer portal for about two days. Todd Golden was able to bring him back here shortly after he ent entered the portal. And and he's had a really good offseason. More of that head coaching connection I talked about. Gators still up big. 14-point lead. Reeves has already won. Uh, they, they've got a transfer that let them in scoring tonight. Austin Reeves, I had a chance to see them practice a couple of weeks ago. I saw Auburn practice a couple of weeks yeah. ago. So tip back doesn't go from fudge who's nearing double figures here in the first half you saw castleton already with nine gators a 52 percent 
field goal percentage here in the first 17 minutes. Yeah, this is a little Princeton-like offense. High post. It's Morris. Extra look on Yacon. Just nicks the rim. Reeves the rebound. I have to give a lot of credit to Stony Brook, Kyle, because they could have rolled over after the start they yep. have, but they've got the fight of this game back in the middle of the ring. Kept alive by that three ball, five of their seven made shots from behind the arc. You see Todd Golden, successful stint at San Francisco, went to the NCAA tournament last year for the first time since 98 for San Francisco. So we'll talk more about his approach as the game goes along. Fudge a three. Stevenson Moore corrals it. Never understood why a guy will fumble the ball and go ahead and shoot the shot. If you fumble the ball, look for a teammate. Rotate the ball. Fry off balance. Had a foul. Did you notice, though, the experience of Lofton, who trailed on that screen as Fry came off, and he avoided the contact but still contested the shot. That just shows the experience of a Kyle Lofton. Yeah, first real true point guard, of course, since Andrew Nemhard is now playing in the NBA. You know, dealt with a groin injury in the fall. They didn't have Will Richard or Kyle Lofton for a large portion of that fall offseason. Here's Lofton, a one-legged leaner. He could score, too. Under control. Fun to watch. First two points as a Gator for Lofton. Over 1,600 in his career. That didn't look good coming out of the hands of Fitzmorris. Bodies tangle into the photographers. It's the same thing I said on the Florida end because you mentioned it. Fitzmaurice kind of fumbled the ball as he was trying to get the feel for it. If that happens, don't go ahead and shoot it because all you end up doing is shot putting the ball. There's Kugel back in. Assistant coach Corey McRae says is an SEC athlete. We talked to Todd Golden earlier today. Said he's a freak athlete, but his basketball basketball acumen is off the charts. Fudge couldn't corral it. You know I always say about those, if you'll throw right at the guy's face, he never lets the ball go through his <laughs> hands at his face. That's one Fudge would like to have back, though. Good pass by Kugel. That's the second time they sprung that little block-to-block -block screen to get the big guy open. Castleton, another block tonight. Gators out and running. Fudge the sidestep and the finger roll. He's just so long and can take up space. First player in double figures in this game tonight, Alex Fudge. And this is a foul on Reeves. Castleton is one of the better shot blockers in this conference and in the country. So here he is with rim protection on one end, leads the break. Now watch this by Fudge for a guy six foot nine to have that ability to score off the bounce with the little mini euro pretty impressive already four blocks on the stat sheet for colin castleton reeves active hands sarvin with five glides down the lane an extra look that he didn't need to do probably should have just finished and paul Shelley telling him that at a timeout 30 second time out on the floor. I wonder, because you teased this earlier, this Todd Golden staff, very analytical drip, analytically driven. This is enough to work three for two. But I do understand two for one. And here's what they're gonna do. Watch and see if they don't shoot in the first 10 seconds or so. About a 15 second differential. No look through the hands of Castleton. I, I'm not sure that's what they had in mind. Stevenson more contorts for the bucket. <laughs> They're getting their two for one. <laughs> Cuts it back to 16. Well, now you can hold for the final shot. Stony Brook has fouls to give. They just don't have bodies to give the fouls. <laughs> Three team fouls. 
Not a lot of whistles in the first half. Only five to play. Lofton goes to work. Lofton, Castleton, a tray. Off the mark, Kugel, the tip back doesn't go. Castleton still searching for that first career tray. Had a good look, Mark, and a good first half for the Gators. Great start. Castleton flexing his muscles here in the first. There's Gino Ford. He used to be a broadcaster. Yes. He used to do, um, I think, American conference games. After he coached at Bradley, he was talking about his television experience. And we had a delightful chat with him today at Shootaround. But he said you didn't get the, the sensation of a win or the, the downtrodden thought of a loss. You know, he missed that feeling of win or loss that there was a scoreboard. And that's part of why he got back into coaching. I promise you, I do not miss those. <laughs> I sleep much better at yeah. night sitting in this chair versus across the court. A lot less evaluation. Now let's see what happens here in possession one. Does Florida settle for a shot or do they get the shot they want? Lofton, Reeves, Felder, Castleton, and Richard. The five to start here in the second half. The way Lofton does not have to dribble, I think is infectious with the other guys on the team. In recent years, you've seen too much of it. And Reeves is over dribbling there. Stop and shoot your 10 footer. Stony Brook took 18 threes, hit five of them in the first half. Got a long two. Lofton eyes up a bullet towards Richard, couldn't find him. It's going to be fun this year to see Kyle Lofton work in transition with some of those wing pieces running the floor with him. Well, I think he missed Castleton underneath. A tough two rolls in for Kyle Lofton. So many times, Kyle, I don't think point guards understand that their scoring comes about later. Later in a possession, later in a game. Kyle Lofton gets that. Took just one visit to Florida. They didn't think originally they could get him. Yeah, it was an interesting story yeah. this, today, wasn't it? And Todd, towards the end of the visit, says, I think we have a shot. Canceled all the, all the rest of his visits. He had a visit scheduled for Purdue. Golden had to do some of that same recruiting for Castleton in a Panera in Orlando originally to get him to come back. But Colin was adamant. He said, I'm not coming back. I'm going to test the waters of the NBA. But then he thought about it. NIL opportunities. A chance to really finish his college career in style and also help his stock as a healthy player. That wasn't the case last year, and now you know, he dealt with that shoulder injury a season ago, had that shoulder surgery. Yeah, the good news is I think this is lower on the swipe. It's on the left arm. Take another look. Stevenson Moore just went for the swipe. He got more arm than he did ball. In a new world of NIL deals and the like, O'Collins a guy who's going to cash in in his fifth year, quite literally. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of that this year. Player development, we're, we're, we're redefining in this NIL era. We're redefining player development. It's not going to be year to year. It's now going to be October to April. Five out. Stevenson more the cut through, fades away and hits. Guy that averaged seven and a half points a game last year, 48% from the field, capable score. Went scoreless in this game last year, right before the holiday break. Castleton, big strides in the lane. Elder last to touch. mentioned before at the top 
Stony Brook first year in the CAA. They're going to have an adjustment process to one of the best mid-major conferences in the country with essentially a brand new roster. As Richard has the takeaway, glides in, rises up, got fouled. Good activity defensively there. The young freshman turns it over, take another look. Off the bounce, guard to guard pass. Just good anticipation by Richard. They had a scary situation with him in the fall. His knee buckled. He had an MCL sprain. They thought the worst, and Todd Golden said, quote, we dodged a bullet. Now he's become a premier shooter this fall. Only shot it last year at a 33% clip from three, but they really think he could be a difference maker from beyond the arc. And he comes from a great winning program at Belmont. 15-3 and three in the OVC a year ago. They played in the NIT. Yeah. On the all OVC newcomer team. Yeah, averaged about 12 points, six boards. He averaged 19 points against two SEC opponents last year in LSU and Vandy. Policelli backdoor Stevenson Moore Reeves the flyby. This will be a foul. Yeah, it's a great blast cut. Angle cut by Stevenson Moore. Throw it when you throw it in to the same side that you're standing on, and you cut straight to the basket. That I'm calling that a blast cut. And that time Reeves got guilty of turning his head. I learn new things from you all the time, Mark. We got the Kansas <laughs> cut. The, the Kansas cut. cut, you love the Kansas I love cut. The Kansas. Yeah. I'm a big Kansas cut guy. Long two from Fry. And we're gonna foul here off the ball. Richard and Fry some words back and forth, and the Rowdies will let Fry hear it. This had this was going back up the floor. Yeah. And I think they've just called a personal foul on Fry. That'll be the fourth team foul. So Fry comes out. Here's Geno Ford, former Ohio Mr. Basketball. 1993, fourth season as the head coach of Stony Brook. It's the head coach at Bradley, also Kent State. Richard lines it up, buries it. But again, the ball never hit the deck on a dribble. Just a simple guard-to-guard -guard exchange. And I, what I like about that is that Richard took up slack. And what I mean by that is when you pass, then take up slack, get closer to the arc. Frantic possession. Right to Lofton. Richard passes up the three. Head to the line for two. Got bailed out there. Not sure that was going to be a very good look. After making the three, Richard decides to drive. Gets nudged a little bit. Sarvin's going, man, I got to guard these guys out here. <laughs> Richard won a lot of the three-point shooting competitions in the fall, but you know who won the three-point shootout in the open scrimmage? That was Alex Klatsky. We might see him I tonight. I believe he beat Will Richard in the finals. Actually, it might have been Myron Jones he beat. It was Klatsky who reigned supreme that night in front of the home fans. Did you stay for that? I did. I watched okay, the dunk competition. for you. Here's Petway. Sarvin, familiar range from about 28 feet. Timeout on the floor. Gators still comfortably in front. Will Richards come alive in this second half, nearing double figures here on opening night. It's going to be a lineup of Lofton and Bonham on the floor out of the timeout. Along with Richard, Castleton, and Fudge. 
That's Ball really zipping good. around. Yeah, that's really good. Ends in a loft in three. Lofton's first made three. Petway out of control. Here's this last possession. Watch the ball movement. No dribbling. Kick out, inside out. Lofton knocks down the three ball. Castleton with the assist. That's just good stuff. You call that a Mark Wise possession right yes, there. Yes, it is. Ball doesn't hit the ground. Normally, I have to use my divide by two theory <laughs> with guards who love to dribble the ball to death. You have a lot of theories. <laughs> Bonham gets his own miss. Everything centers around Castleton at that elbow area. Might be fading away a little bit on that. He's got to hang with that shot. They're trying to find a seven footer, Rocco Miratori. Prepped at IMG Academy. Tanaj Petway slips in. Miratori can't get the rebound. Fudge rises up, can't finish. Policelli was in the area. He didn't want to get put on a poster. <laughs> Lofton upstairs, trying to find redemption for Fudge, but that lob hit the rim. Yeah, that might be the first mistake Lofton's made in this game. It was the right idea, and it was there. Now, if you're the stat people, do you count that as a shot? You can't, right? Although I'm not a stat person. <laughs> so I, I'm sure what they're talking about, the officials right here, is whether or not they're going to count that as a shot. And what the shot clock should right. be set at. I think in that case, you'd have to, right? I'm for whatever gets us going the fastest. <laughs> Chuck Jones, the veteran, coming over the scores table. We'll switch the shot clock to 27. Shot clock set to 27. I think for that to happen, they would have to call that a shot. Hmm. Otherwise, the out-of-bounds situation would have been reset to 20. Well, here's a little man-to-man. -man. Fudge inside. Jatobo does find Bonham recycle 20. Playoff two feet. Eh, not a great possession. Gators have scored the last 10 in this game. So now back to the zone. Interesting because Gino Ford is seeing what Florida is doing and he's almost like mixing and matching based on what Florida sets up in. Only three to shoot. Richard from the parking lot. Good shot clock awareness that time by Richard. He shot that right in front of yeah. Todd Golden. That better go in. Policelli to the rack. This will be on Jatobo. Take a look, Kyle, at where this shot comes from by Richard. Right in front of Todd Golden. I think the players should say, Coach, you weren't out guarding that close enough. <laughs> Gave too much room. I think the three-point line is just a rumor to these players nowadays. <laughs> Yeah. 
Myron Jones back in. We'll see. That's somewhat of a, a subplot, I would say, of, of this second half. To so oh, see I, if they can get Jones, just to see the ball go through the I net. Think, I think it's a big subplot. I think Bonham's minutes at the point is a big subplot here. Myron Jones, first half, 0 for 2. But, Mark, you remember those two misses didn't even hit rim. Myron was one of the first players out on the floor at around 10 a.m. taking shots with the managers, just shot after shot. Kugel being aggressive off the bounce. You got to be careful in a game like this. You're playing against a lot of zone. What works in this game may not work when you go to Tallahassee, may not work when you go to Knoxville, and so on. Kennesaw State on the horizon for the Gators on Friday night, and then a very good Florida Atlantic team, a game you'll have next Monday night before they head to Florida State, and then the PK-85, much-anticipated Thanksgiving tournament. Which you're going to be a part of. Yeah. Which is great. It's a great event. You'll love it. Have a lot of fun filling in for Sean Kelly for a couple games on Gator Radio. Possibility of seeing Duke in the second game of that tournament. Gators will have their one of their NIT opponents from last year, Xavier. Who's got a lot of people back. Yeah. It'll be a tough game. There's the Princeton look. Oh, Fudge thought he got all ball. We'll get another look at it. Princeton is a high post offense. A lot of times all five players are not only on the perimeter but above the free throw line. That opens up a lot of backdoor opportunities. Nobody at the rim. That's a great find. Oof. Yeah, that's a foul. Yeah, there's some body there. Yeah. Plus, if you get beat like that, you should foul. Policelli, again, this year was expected to play at one of his normal natural positions of three or four. But with all the injuries, he's had to go back to where he was last year in that front court. Played a lot of that five position. Third year at Stony Brook. Top returning score. Fudge, quick hoist. You bet a three. And that ties a career high for Alex Fudge with 14 points. Shooting that with confidence, wasn't he? You, know, you make that shot, you're going to get minutes. Yeah. Outstanding debut, now 6 of 11, 2 of 4 from 3 for Fudge. Fitz Morris, the rebound. Stevenson Moore, Fudge had the position, a charge. He's doing it all tonight. That shows a little SEC experience. Fudge getting it done offensively, but also gives up this body defensively. Turnover, and the Gators on top at home. And you wonder what his heartbeat is like for game one. It's almost the start of a, a new era for Alex Fudge. You know, he didn't play a whole lot, was buried right. on the depth chart at LSU, and now he's going to come here, and he's going to be a big player for Todd Golden. What I'm expecting from these wings, since we're talking about that all night in terms of the guys that are going to play the, the shooting guard, the small forward, the power forward, I think you're going to see different guys step up different nights. And that's the beauty of having depth. Because yeah. if you have that kind of production from that many different guys, you become a hard scout. Takes pressure off of Castleton as well. On your cone, throws it away. 13th Stony Brook turnover. Again, if you're just joining us, Stony Brook is without four players, eight scholarship players tonight. And without two of their best transfers, a couple of all-conference guards of their previous stops, and Aaron Clark and Dean Knoll. It's never good when you've got guys on the bench in boots. Yeah. Not the cowboy kind, but the medical kind. You ever wear cowboy boots as a coach? Never. No. 
Tell you what, nobody's wearing suits anymore. Todd Golden going with the quarter zip tonight. I'm, I'm wondering when that's getting to the broadcast <laughs> table. Not quite yet. I can wear cowboy boots, though. <laughs> How many? Do you have a pair? No, I don't. No, I should. <laughs> I was about to be shocked. <laughs> big on big. Fitzmorris. Jatobo. Good active hands. Bonham. The acceleration all the way to the rim got stripped. Call a foul here on Keenan Sarbin. And he's a, a bolt of energy, Trey Bonham. Just you know, 5'11". Official roster has him at six foot. The hack by Sarvin there. That all got set up by the quick hands, as you called it, by Jatobo. So good to see Jatobo back on the floor. Yeah. That was a real gruesome eye injury. He had to spend 20 hours at a time, you know, whether it was 50 minutes on, 10 minutes off, where he had to lay face first into a pillow just to right. take pressure off that eye. And it would come out to about 20 hours a day where he would be face first looking at a pillow. He would just listen to podcasts, listen to music to pass the time. He still doesn't quite have that vision fully back in that eye. It's certainly enough, of course, to play. Bottom missed those two free throws. He was 83% last year. Fudge. Rises up, athletic in mid-flight. Fitzmore is a foul. I, I, it's one of those plays, though, Kyle, that I, I, those are the kind of plays as a head coach I would get concerned about because he's a little out of control. He gets bailed out by the foul. But that's a time where Fudge made up his mind way too early what he wanted to do. Jacksonville, Florida native. That's another side of this, too. He gets to come back home where his friends and family are. He had some family in the Louisiana area around Baton Rouge, but he's back where he grew up, you know, highly recruited out of high school, number eight prospect in the state of Florida. Lee High School yeah. in Jacksonville. Kowasi Reeves back in for the Gators. Don't you feel, do you agree with me that Fudge looks like he has such a high upset? Absolutely. As we've talked about, Gators have a lot of depth at that wing position. Ten to shoot now. Oh, Fry thought about it. Yeah, good luck. Jatobo in there. He did not like it. Brian having to work really hard because Kugel was guarding him tight. Take another look. Not a lot there, but... Chuck Jones didn't like that reaction from Jatobo. <laughs> he gave him an extra stare. Gutty performance by Fry. Absolutely. Who, as we talked about in the first half, hurt himself here at practice last night. Went for an x-ray this, this morning, came back negative with his toe. And out there toughing it. Coach Ford said he's questionable, but he really said, I don't think there's a shot that he plays tonight. And boy, did he play. Yeah. Nine points, 23 minutes. He had a giant bag of ice on his foot, sitting on the bench to not participate in shoot around. He's going to be a good piece. Kowasi with the new haircut. Jones comes up with it, got tripped up. There wasn't anything about that possession that looked good. <laughs> Another bailout foul. Well, Mark, I don't know if you got a close-up of the haircut for Kowasi Reeves. I think it has some, yeah. some hearts on there, but we're used to seeing Kowasi with the, the big hair and what they called the Wasey. He cut that before a scrimmage a, a couple weeks ago. And I think before the open scrimmage is when he debuted. Uh, I believe those are hearts. Died into his head. Looks like a different guy. I would do that, but I just don't have any hair. 
would just be on skin. Yeah. That wouldn't look good. It's a good look on Kowasi. Well, maybe those free throws will get Jones yeah. going. Yeah, first points tonight, Mark, from Iron Jones. But again, he doesn't have to score to impact the game. Back door, pull a chili up high, and a foul. This is the second time Florida's gotten beat. Everybody's lifted above the free throw line. This is classic Princeton. High post, back door, nice find by the big, and pull a chili with the flush. That's good stuff. Silly foul by Reeves. You gotta let him go. And Reeves saw that coming out of the corner of his eye and spun out of there. Here's Kugel at the point for a couple of possessions. He yeah, has done that a little bit along with Jones, Bonham. But see, he's not in the scoring position. Every time you pass it, take up slack, get closer to the line. Fry comes up with it. And of course, he's got back responsibilities. With the injury to Lofton in the fall, they had a chance to rotate some guys at the point. Oasey Reeves hard off the window. So if there was any positive in Kyle Lofton missing, that's that they right. allowed that depth to get some experience running the show. Here's Jones. Oof. Timeout on the floor. Gators a comfortable lead. Game one, up 30. To start the Todd Golden era inside Exact Tech Arena. To Alex Fudge and what he's done here tonight. A lot of versatility on the offensive end, getting on the glass, being creative off the bounce, knocking down a couple of threes and in the paint with a little jumper. And the result, a new career high. 16 points for Alex Fudge. Garrett Fry missed on the other oh. end. Kowasi Reeves gets the bounce from three. Now you're not going to get that kind roll very no. often. Corner three, back of the iron, straight up and straight through. Just how he drew it up. Get a foul here. Kowasi Reeves really came alive late in the year, especially that SEC tournament game at 21 second half points and what was a heart wrenching loss in the conference tournament to Texas A&M. Actually kick started a great run by Texas A&M. Yeah. You're supposed to call the dislodge, but Steven Samore got away with one there. Keenan Sarban. Only five of 25 tonight from three. There's nowhere to go when you dribble like that. Three seconds here. Three seconds. That was on Felder. I thought Felder was solid in the first half, but he's kind of been quiet here in the second. Here's the other part about the depth on those wings is you're into role development in a game like this. First game of the year at home, you've got spread in the game. There's no such thing when you're defining roles as a bad minute when you right. get in. If you're bummed about... Hey, I'm not in. Every minute that you're in will define your role. Up top, Castleton runs the floor for the jackhammer. Yeah, I love giving it up. Reward the big fella running the floor. Three on one break for the fans in attendance and another Castleton dunk. Backdoor Sarban, a deuce. 
don't think Todd Golden will re be real pleased with his team's defending that action. Let's take another look at it, Mark. Defense to offense, the turnover, and the extra pass. Castleton finish. Different view, same result. <laughs> Fans happy to see that site for another year. Number 12 going sky high for a dunk at home. Get a hand check foul here. Another guy, when you talk about all minutes matter essentially equally when you're trying to evaluate your personnel early in the year, this is a big minutes for Niles Lane. Let's no see what question. you got here in the final five. Yeah, no question. One of those guys that needs to find a role on this team. Is he more than a defensive stopper, I think, is the big question for Niles Lane. Can it be somebody who can you know, give him a, a kick to an open shot and knock it down? You know how you can score if you're not sure if you're a scorer or not? Go get an offensive rebound. That's right. Castleton. Oh. Couldn't finish. Pretty high level move there. That was a nice hook. <laughs> he did the shooter McGavin guns, Keenan Fitzmorris. <laughs> shooter. See, eventually Castleton just has to turn around and shoot that shot. You don't force it in there. I know he scores there in yeah. this game. But maybe not in January. Well, February. maybe not against the length of a Kentucky. How about, speaking of Kentucky, I have them Friday, but, man, they are so banged up. Yeah. Oscar trying to come back from the knee surgery, and Wheeler's been out. They won comfortably tonight, but... Player of the year in the country back yeah. for the first time since Ralph Sampson. And that's part of, you know, the NIL opportunities where that wouldn't happen. Right. Now that brings some of these guys back, including a Colin Castleton. Baycott at North Carolina, another. It, Drew Timmy. I mean, the amount of good bigs in our game, yeah. pretty high. There's Niles Lane making his minutes count. You see the way he played off two feet, though? Everybody wants to play off one foot. There's nothing good for you. Fitz Morris. It's like a rec league game has broken <laughs> out. Rowdy's calling for Alice Klatsky, and here he is. Timeout on the floor. Fans get what they want. Alex Klatsky will enter the floor when we come back. Gators up 30. The largest margin of victory in a Florida coaching debut. Tommy Bartlett back in just a few years ago, 1966, 34 point victory at Jacksonville. Right now, the separation 30. So you're saying we're on a record watch. That's right. And I'm also saying that I don't think Florida would travel to Jacksonville to start a season either in <laughs> 2022. Foul here on Niles Lane. We'll have Coach Golden after the final whistle tonight get his thoughts on night one. And you know if I'm Klatsky and I'm in the game, there is no such thing as a good assist now. That's right. Chuck it. You have got to get it up. We're on Chuck It Watch for Klatsky. Wearing a 21, gave up number three to Alex Fudge. Also, Denzel Aberdeen, the freshman, is in. High school teammates with Riley Kugel, Dr. Phillips in Orlando. Just remember, no such thing as a bad minute. Aberdeen. Klatsky. <laughs> But against the wise rules. Oh. 
I think, too, sometimes we forget is Alex Klatsky is a pretty good basketball player. He's somebody who probably could have played at a mid-major level. Also, we'll see some of the other players deep on the bench. Alex Shimchik is in, but also walk-on Jack May. Oh, now we got on. all kinds of guys oh. that need to let it fly. <laughs> look early, look opposite, <laughs> find the guy. Bonham. Got it. First Gator points for Trey Bonham come in the final minutes here of the second half. Five rebounds, three assists in his debut. Petway. Little things like Aberdeen rebounding right there. Get a foul. All around tonight for the Gators, three and double figures, career night for Alex Fudge with 16, Will Richard, solid second half with 14 and a couple of trays, Castleton with 13, five rebounds, along with a handful of blocks for Colin Castleton tonight, total of four, which all came in the first half. Meanwhile, first career point for Denzel Aberdeen comes at the line. Here's Colin. He did not like how last year ended. Really felt like he let a lot of people down, but he just was not healthy last year. And he right. played his heart out. His numbers were there. Mark, you think Florida's a team that definitely can surprise a lot of people around the conference and there's a lot of teams that can finish probably four through nine in this yeah, league this I year. agree with both of those and I say that about Florida because of what I mentioned at the beginning being good up the middle when you've got a really good point guard oh oh Klutsky, oh! A three! <laughs> cloud on its feet The most electric building in a 30-plus point game with 50 seconds left you'll ever see. And the bench was going wild. Klatsky chance raining down. Don't you have to go on a heat check? <laughs> Here's Jack May. Do we get the double dip? Put back is up and in. What a finish to the golden debut. What a fun final minute. That bench loves it. I mean, the towels are being whipped. Everybody's up. That's, that's good to see. Final seconds tick away. Kane Roberts, the bucket, and that should do it. Convincing and a golden start to Todd Golden's tenure as Florida Gator head coach. 1-0.